guys, it's Frank from Cruising with Wheels. Who doesn't love a great meatloaf? Well, today we're going to make one of Kevin's all-time favorite dinners, savory meatloaf, right here today on Frank's Cooking Corner. Before we get started, I just want to tell you a quick story. Kevin's meatloaf versus my family's meatloaf. Now, I used to make meatloaf for Kevin uh, after we met, and he would say, how come your meatloaf tastes like a giant Italian meatball? Why do you put all those spices in? And I would say, I don't know. That's how I always did it. And then one day, I was talking on the phone with my sister, Janine, and she was telling me that her husband, David, just wasn't so crazy about her meatloaf. And I said, you know, Kevin says the same thing about my meatloaf. And it turns out we were both doing the same thing. We were making our meatloaf with all the same spices that we would put in an Italian meatball the parsley, the oregano, the mint, uh, you know, all that, all that, you know, onion powder, garlic powder, all that crazy stuff. And then Kevin said to me, you know, I have a basic meatloaf recipe that I love. Why don't you make it like this? So I took his recipe and I looked it over and I said, oh, okay, and I tweaked it a bit. And that's when we came up with Kevin's basic meatloaf recipe. And I gave it to my sister when she visited one day and I said, here, maybe you should try this and make it for David. And she did. And David's response was, I love it. And she called me and she said, David loved the recipe. So my sister and I make only Kevin's basic meatloaf recipe. It's so simple. It's so easy. Here are the ingredients you'll need. Ground beef. An onion. Italian breadcrumbs. Milk. Bread. Eggs. Ketchup, yellow mustard, salt and pepper, butter, Worcestershire sauce, chili sauce, and this recipe makes dinner for four hungry people. Especially in my family. Mm, yummy! Now, the first thing I start with is I dice up my onions and I saute them first in a little butter. Now, I know some people just dice up their onions and mix it in the raw hamburger and then bake it. I don't do that. What I don't like is biting in to a piece of meatloaf and tasting a raw onion. So I like to saute it, and then it kind of gets that soft caramelized onion butter flavor mixed in with the hamburger. So I want to know what you think. After this video, comment below. Do you put in raw onions or pre-cooked onions into your meatloaf recipe? Let me know. So let's get started cutting up our onion. Let's cut the ends off first. And let's gently get the skin off. 
Give it a little slice and it'll peel right off. There we go. Put that in there. Out of the way. Okay. And now let's just start slicing it. I usually just cut it in half and then just do one half at a time when I'm dicing. Usually use my finger as a guide. Don't chop it off. Kind of keep it curved down a bit. But I use it to gauge the thickness as I'm chopping. When I get to the end, I flatten it out because it's getting a little bit too difficult to stand up because it's so thin. There we go. Then I usually try to put it back together and give it the final chop. Again, not a professional chef. Ooh, that's the core. Ew, don't like it. Gotta go. Let's get the rest of my onions here. And chop them up. Careful, those fingers, that knife is sharp. Alrighty, so there you go. One onion sliced and diced. All right, we're ready to get it into our frying pan. So let's get going. We have about a tablespoon of butter in our skillet. And I have the skillet on about low to medium heat. And once the uh, pan of butter is melted down a bit, I'm gonna get my onions in there and we're going to saute them for a few minutes and get them all nice, soft, and glistening. Into the skillet they go. Now a lot of you may say, wow, that's a lot of onions. But remember, onions cook down. So it looks like a lot in the beginning really doesn't end up being a lot once it's done. Now let's move around. I'm going to add a little salt and pepper. We're cooking onions and butter. Every part of your meatloaf should be flavored. I just can't imagine all these onions going into my raw meatloaf without being pre-cooked. So remember, I need you to comment below. Do you pre-cook your onions? before you make your meatloaf, or do you put your onions in raw? 
Let me know. We're going to let these cook down. It'll take just a few minutes and then we'll be back to mix them in our meatloaf mixture. Now it's time to get into our ground beef and mix it up and get some ingredients going. Now, while your onions are sauteing in the skillet, and remember, keep an eye on them. You don't want them to burn and keep stirring them. I'm going to get my large mixing bowl and I have two pounds of ground beef. Now, I buy the 80-20 ground beef. You can buy the 90-10. Uh, you can um, not just use all of ground beef. You can, uh, you can buy a meatloaf mix, which is a combination of ground beef, pork, and I believe veal. And you can get that at any grocery store or meat market. Uh, it depends on what you want. Uh, Kevin is a purist, so he likes you know, strictly ground beef. It, this is a basic meatloaf recipe. So I've got the two pounds of ground beef and I'm just gonna break it up a bit real quick. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna season it with salt and pepper. Again, every layer of a recipe should be seasoned properly. And just like you saw me season uh, my sauteed onions, I will be seasoning with salt and pepper my ground beef. You want your meatloaf to have good flavor. There's nothing worse than bland meatloaf. So now that I have that in, I'm going to take my Worcestershire sauce, and I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons. And I'm going to just give it a little drizzle with one. And my second drizzle. Now it's time to add my mustard, yellow mustard. Spread the wealth. Make your, it'll make your mixing a little easier than just dumping everything in. And now the final ketchup. There you go. And that's it. Those are pretty much what I consider, you know, so far the wet ingredients. So we've done the ground beef with the ketchup, yellow mustard, Worcestershire sauce, and salt and pepper. Very simple, very easy, and now make sure you're mixing it really well. This is just stage one of putting our meatloaf together. It's time to play with our eggs, milk, and bread. And I don't mean for breakfast. Let's get going and mix it all together because that's what binds your meatloaf. And now it's time to get involved with our egg, milk, and bread. So the first thing you want to do 
is grab your two eggs. Let's crack them open in our bowl. And with your fork, beat them real quick. A little scramble. Good enough. And now we're ready to add our milk. Mix it up. There you go. Now set it aside for a moment. And let's work on our bread. I have two slices of bread and I'm going to cube them. Very simple. Just cut them up together. Usually I just do it one half. And then the second half. It's called divide and conquer. And there you have it. There are my bread cubes. That was easy. Now I'm going to take my bread cubes and put them in my egg milk mixture. Stir it up because you want all the bread cubes to absorb all the egg and the milk. Okay. Mix it up, press it down, make sure they're well, well coated, and let it sit there for about a minute or two. Now let's get our onions and our egg bread mixture into the ground beef, and let's get our hands dirty mixing it up. And now we're ready to add a few more of the ingredients we've already been working on in to our beef mixture. So. We can take the onions that we've already sauteed and they only took about five minutes and you can see how translucent they are, how well they have cooked down and I'm just going to get them out of the skillet. And into my bowl. Then it's time for our egg, milk, and bread cubes, and let's get those in. As usual, mix well. It's the egg, milk, and bread that really binds this meatloaf. Stir as best you can. Really get in there. That's all there is to it. The final ingredient, breadcrumbs. Now you may have to alter this a bit and add a little bit more to get a nice firm mixture. Let me know how it works out. It's time for the final ingredient, which are our breadcrumbs. Now, I've poured out so far about, uh, oh, there it is. I just had to move over my meat. I poured out about two cups of Italian breadcrumbs. And I usually like to have a firm mixture. And I found that pretty much two cups is it. You don't want it um, a sloppy, loose uh, meat mixture. 
because then it's just that's how it's gonna cook and when it's done and you're cutting it it's literally gonna fall apart so you want to cut the meatloaf when it's cooked and serve it up and it have be nice and firm firm juicy but not dry so let's start adding it in and I add it a little slowly and mix it up The Italian breadcrumbs always gives it an extra boost of flavor. And I know some people don't like to use Italian breadcrumbs and they just use basic breadcrumbs, unseasoned. Some people use crushed uh, cornflakes. Uh, whatever your flake or crumb of choice is, that uh, is up to you. It's looking a little firm, that's good. I'm just going to give it just a little bit, the rest of the breadcrumbs and then I'm going to get what we call down and dirty. I've already washed my hands and now we're just going to get in there and really make sure this is mixed up properly. And there you have it. Squeeze and mix. Really incorporate those breadcrumbs. My hands are a giant mixing machine. We're about finished now and we're ready to get it into our Pyrex baking dish and get it in the oven. Remember, you want to put a cookie sheet underneath to catch any grease spillage during baking. We're now ready for the oven. So we've got all the entire meatloaf mixture into this Pyrex glass loaf baking dish. It is a five inch by nine inch glass loaf dish. And I've placed it on a cookie sheet with a little foil because as you can see, uh, this meatloaf goes right to the top and you want to catch any grease overflow while it's baking. Now everyone knows that with any kind of meat, when you cook it, it kind of shrinks. So uh, when it's done, it'll, it'll be a little less than what you see now. Uh, but again, that doesn't mean that a little bit of the grease isn't going to be spitting and a sputtering over and you don't want that on the bottom of your oven smoking away and stink it up your kitchen. So let's get it in to the oven. And there you have it. It's in the bottom rack of the oven set for 350 degrees. And we'll set the timer. But first, we can't forget that the babies are always here in the kitchen with me while I'm cooking. Cece, there she is. Hey, Pumpkin, say hi to everybody. And her sister, Delilah, who's chilling out in the bed, just relaxing. We'll be back later when we go through half the baking time and add our chili sauce to the top. About halfway through the baking, pour some nice chili sauce over the top. It's going to give it a nice spicy kick to your meatloaf. Well now, we are 40 minutes in and we have another 40 minutes to go. But it's time to add our chili sauce.
Let's get a little bit more. Alright. Spread it around. As we say, spread the wealth. It's going to be giving your meatloaf just a little tangy, spicy kick to it. Alrighty. Now let's get my mitt put on and get this back into the oven and close the door. And there you have it. It's out of the oven and it's all set and ready to go. We're going to let it sit for about 10 minutes before we start slicing it up. Kevin is waiting patiently for his savory meatloaf dinner. Now that didn't take long at all. And now what you have is a delicious savory meatloaf dinner that your family will absolutely love. Thanks for joining me today on Frank's Cooking Corner. Join me next time when we get together to cook up another fantastic recipe. Remember, all my recipes and pictures can be found on our Cruising with Wheels Facebook page. Just click on photos and look for my album, Frank's Cooking Corner. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.